Boom, we're on. And this week's episode is brought to you by Platinum Wave Campers, the UK's leading stockist of luxury Volkswagen camper vans. With locations up and down the country, Platinum Wave Campers are on hand to bring your vision to life. So whether you are looking to start working on a custom built project or find your dream Volkswagen Transporter, this is a place to look. Ever dreamed of owning your own Volkswagen camper van? Well now's your chance as you can save £500 by using the code JAMES500. All you have to do is speak to one of the friendly sales team and say that James English sent you there. Now, let's get into the episode. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Boom, we're on. Yeah, what about you? Yeah, and today's guest, we've got Lewis Nicol. How are you, my brother? All is well, James. All is well. Thank you for having me. Great to have you on. Been a minute. Been a minute. We've been planning this how many years ago, mate? At least two now. At least two? Yeah. How time flies. Yeah. <laughs> or drags in. <laughs> your videos, brother, it's yeah. like hey. my life with Tourette's. That your videos been viewed hundreds of millions of times. You with Tourette's. A very young age, 16, 17, kind of put into the limelight. With Tourette sitting on planes, shouting, I'm going to bomb, bomb it. Bomb, hey, that. you fuck off, go. But, uh, it's going down the fuck. It'll yeah. be good to get a better understanding of you, who you are, what you actually go through, what you deal with. And um, it's great to have you on, my brother. I mean, that, as I say, it's good to have you in Belfast. I'll admit, eventually we'll get over to Scotland, we'll do something over there. Like, I, I admit, I haven't been to your part of the world before. So, like, out there would be a new thing for me. And uh, yeah, mate, uh, the plane video blew up literally, mate. Thank fuck the plane didn't. But <laughs> <laughs> look, I'm, hey, fuck up the. <clears throat> I guess I might have documented my life without even meaning to, you know? That comes with a lot of pressure, though, because you were only 16 when all that shit happened. Like, this is yeah. why I want to get you on today, because I don't know much about Tourette's as well. Like, I'll see your videos now, I'll laugh. Like, yeah, there's one side of it. Yeah, exactly. We don't see the other side of what you've got to deal with. and like that's why I, I want to understand it and understand you and what you have to go through because we all laugh at the videos even today like you'll probably come out with stuff and i'll probably start laughing like, what is <laughs> that though let's like, see if you see is it because it's a disability though is it is it a disability maybe it holds a lot of people back yeah because a lot of people not allowed it to hold them back but because it forces a lot of people into a shell you know what i mean like it, I'm a, hey but it, fuck off hey <clears throat> most people that uh have ticks I mean, and it's not just Tourette syndrome. Like Tourette syndrome is one one part of my like what text is one part of Tourette syndrome. But more people have text, the more people have Tourette syndrome. One in every hundred school children have have some sort of tick disorder. You know what I mean? That's brought on for stress, brought on for anxiety. Yeah, I'm a fuck off, hey, but it's fucking go karts, hey, <clears throat> brought out for trauma. You know what I mean? Head trauma, but mostly emotional trauma. It's how people feel that they get embarrassed, they get anxious, mate, and that brings out ticks. You know what I mean? Whereas Tourette syndrome is different. It's whenever people have physical tics and emotional tics and physical tics and vocal tics, they're able to come out and come off with random words that they don't even mean to say. You know what I mean? They're karma, fuck off. Eh? For me, it was my shoulders that started it all off. So, but mate, it went from my shoulder all across my body. You know what I mean? Now my leg flies out, my hands go weird places, I smack myself in the head. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I made this disabling, but again, it's all mentality. Like with any sort of brain disorder, you can either let it hold you back or else you can throw it to the side and say, nah, I'm going to continue to do my shit and I'm going to bring you along with the ride because you're not going fucking anywhere. Yeah, I love that. I always go back to the start of my guest though, brother. Where you grew up and how it all began. Oh, shit. <laughs> we moved about a lot. <laughs> you know, we came from England and got the... Damn it, fuck hey, Balls, fuck off. <clears throat> balls, fuck off. We came from England. I was born in Leeds. Came to Northern Ireland whenever I was young, mate. And mum and dad like to move across this place a lot, mate. Different council house to different council house. Uh, never really had one place to call my own. You know what I mean? And then we did. But it wasn't my own. You know what I mean? It's a, it was my dad's spot. And like after my ma died, mate, that was 11 years old. Uh, he lost himself. He just lost his lover. You know what I mean? So it's a bit, hey, fuck off. Of course, I lost the big part of my life. But he lost a big part of his life too, so it changed him. 
and uh, he kind of forgot how to be a dad. And sad to say, like, he figured it all back out again. But it was for losing us as well, losing my mum, that he had to figure that out. That's so, God, God's plan, mate, you know. So what were you like before then at school and stuff? Was there any signs of text, Tourette's, all that, anything like that? I've always been different. But what never, way? never, no ticks. Whenever I was, uh, whenever I was young, ticks only came on whenever I was sixteen years old. I woke up one day, mate, and had karma. Fuck off, hey, box. I was going. Fuck off. I was going to school. I'd just been transferred out of school. Had to hold back a year. Being held back a year, not for anything bad, mate. All medical stuff, like a bad tonsillitis, bro. <laughs> so I missed out a lot of the year. Was doing shit in my exams because of it. So I decided I'll, I'll redo it. I, I don't care about the extra time. I'll redo it. Because I want to get good qualifications, I want to have a good life. I still don't have a qualification to my name, bro. Got a, <laughs> I think a level two in English, you know, and I fucking I can barely speak, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, yeah, fuck, hey, but, but, fuck off, hey, folks. But without uh, qualifications to tell you you're not going to succeed in life, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You know what I mean? I'm able to connect with people because I've been through a wee bit of shit, you know. And with that connecting with people, people want to give me opportunity, and it's up to me to take it. Do you think being in, in and out of schools and moving a lot plays a part on having Tourette's? I, I think it's all part of me, you know what I mean? I think Tourette's is technically a, her, a, a hereditary illness, so it's family genes. You know, it's family, people in my family have fucked up heads, <laughs> you know what I mean? And half of us don't realise it because we're not diagnosed, because... Well, we're from this little place called Belfast, mate, where everybody's a wee bit fucked up in the head. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can agree with that, bro. <laughs> Same <laughs> as Glasgow. <laughs> I'm about to say it's your first time hearing you're really insult on this game. <laughs> I know, mate. I want out here alive, mate. I come in peace, but I, I do love the Irish. I, I genuinely do, but yeah, it's yeah. a fucking mad place, mate, if I'm honest. Yeah, mate. Well, fuck off, hey. It's a place built on conflict, Northern Ireland. You know what I mean? Quite literally, England took it from the Irish. The Irish are saying, no, it's ours. The English are saying, hardly if we took it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, it, it will not get in that side of things, mate. I'm no politician saying that now. I don't fuck with politics in this country because the country's politics are all different types of fucked up. You know what I mean? So stay away from it, mate. The past is the past. Let it sleep. That the people will now decide what they want to do. And mate, I, I have no problem calling this place Ireland. I have no problem calling this place British. I have no problem calling this place Northern Ireland because politically that's what it is. You know what I mean? As long as the people here are nice to me, I'll be nice to them. Yeah. It's mad that it's why a country can be divided like that and the, the, the fucking terrors that were caused for so many years. Like, <laughs> from, from both ahead. sides. Fuck off. Yeah. It's, it's scary. Yeah. I love the Irish and I've got friends on both sides and Same. I speak to people on both sides like, it's just mad like, to sit back and think, wow, like, we're only 100 miles across the water. If that's Scotland, I don't know, 50, 60 miles, and and all the shit that went on, you're forgetting it's, it's still people. Hey, fuck off, don't shoot me, you cunt. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a gun on you, do you? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you smuggle on that boat? No, <laughs> I did think about bringing one mate for protection, bro. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I got scruff. <laughs> you know, we'd scruff yeah, my protection. Scruff your dog, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, through all the. Your childhood was a bit rough, moved about everywhere. And I love when, when your mum passed away. Yeah. And would, did you have any texts or anything before that? Uh, no, mate, my mum didn't have... Uh, my, uh, she'd be quick to tell anybody to fuck off, mate, if she needed to, you know what I mean? But she didn't have no texts. But uh, yourself, at least not, when she not passed? I, mate, I was very young whenever she died, so, like, not that I can't remember her much, but I can't, you know? Like, I can remember bits and bobs, but, I, mate, I've spent longer now on, on Earth without her than what I ever had with her, you know? Yeah. So, like... There's not much I could really uh, tell you about her characteristics apart from she was a strong woman. But when she passed, is that when you, when it, was that the catalyst for everything to kind of... Uh, when she passed, I'd say that was maybe the start of my emotional trauma because I had to go through life with something most people my age still had. But no, it wasn't the start of my tics. My the start of my tics was whenever I was 16. I uh, went into Dundonald High and... <laughs> I have no idea what happened to me, mate. Woke up that day with a lot of energy. Just more energy than I've ever had in my life. And, mate, it turned into, like, a shoulder tick. And, like, hey, fuck off, calm up, fuck off, kind of, like that. But it was it was all day. Calm up, fuck off, eh? It was all day. And it went from one or one or twice every few minutes to, like, continuous not stopping for hours. And, mate, I was exhausted. So I got rushed. Calm up, fuck off, eh? No, sorry, mate. Ah. <sighs> I got, damn, fuck off, eh? I got rushed in the hospital. 
And uh, they put me on, I'm not sure what they injected me with. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> Some good shit, mate. <laughs> but it can, fuck it, yeah. As far as I'm aware, it calmed down the shoulder spasm. But as soon as the drug wore off, mate, and I came back to reality and out of cuckoo land, like I was literally seeing people with free heads trying to slap fucking knives away from my auntie's face. It was weird shit, mate. But as soon as the, the drug wore off, the ticks came back twice as strong. It went from my shoulder to the shoulder, the leg to the leg. I mean, I couldn't get out of bed, you know what I mean? I was throwing myself out of bed, but I couldn't walk out of bed, you know what I mean? It was fucking horrible. Like, no control over my body. And then when the vocal texts started to come, it stopped the physical texts as much. Like, like huh? fuck off, hey, I was still, fuck off. I was still ticking, but it wasn't all physical. It started to turn into vocal, and then it kind of went back and forth in between them both. To a point where not Sorry, things that you might not support. Food alarm. <laughs> what is that? Uh, food, food alarm. To eat? Yeah, mate. I'm like, I'm like, fuck it. As I said to you, mate, Teresa is more than just ticks. So, like, I'd have, like, a day, a bit of ADHD in me where I'd just be all over the place and, I, like, I find it very hard to focus. So, whenever I do get focused, mate, I'd be distracted and I'd be willing to distract myself a lot of times so I'd forget the important shit like food <laughs> you know what I mean that I'd quite literally starve myself to talk to you or to talk to Kylie or to talk to Steph or to, to stroke scruff you know I'd be sitting there and a few hours would go by and I wouldn't even realise it <laughs> it's a bit nuts but it happens so when did the verbal stuff start with the tax? two weeks in hospital were you thinking it was just a phase mm, I was thinking what the fuck's wrong with me mm-hmm. uh, you you know, it was, I'm not saying it. hey, fuck off, there was, no, hey, there was no sort of stage at it whenever I thought, you know what, I, I'll get through this, because at the end of the day, I, I had no idea what the fuck it was, all I knew is that if this is Tourette's, then I've got to learn to live with it, you know, there was no point where I thought, you know what, this, this could go away, even though the doctor was telling me uh, it could be a tick disorder, and that there could could last maybe a year, you know, but I already knew that it wasn't. And um, weird to say that, but like I did. And what are they saying in hospital? You were in hospital for five weeks. Five weeks. And we did it start picking up in hospital. Were you shouting at nurses and uh, it started off with a hey, a simple hey, fuck off, hey, fuck off. <laughs> hey. <clears throat> it started off with a hey. And yeah. from that hey, it was funny because like I was already around good crack of people. Like mm-hmm. so, I shout hey at people, and then people at the corridor turn around, and then we'd all stand there and wave. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'd, I'd tick hey again, and it would go on. And then eventually, like the curse words came into it, and that's what's known. Karma, fuck off, hey, fuck off. That, <clears throat> that's what's known as corporate helia threats. And I can remember balls. Hey, the first one was bell end. Like, and, and that stuck for a while while I was in hospital, and it was always bell end, bell, bollocks, hey, you, fuck off, it was always bell end, bell end, bell end, and came out sort of the same thing, maybe it got a wee bit louder, but it would always just be that, and again, it started to turn into full sentences, which kind of worried me, because that's longer that I'm talking that I have no control over what I say, and that, made yeah, it's a fucking weird thing having somebody rip control out of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what they saying? So what is it actually that does that? How does that trigger the brain? Is it a there's neuroscience of it? Like what is it really? It's a chemical imbalance in your brain, mm-hmm. but there's no real thing to say this is what caused this. You know, so no like trigger points or any like. Uh, there, there's. I got a plasma transplant done, so pretty much they took all the blood out of my body, put took all the plasma out of my blood, and then put some of these new plasma in my blood, and then put that in my body. Because there could have been, harm, fuck up, there could have been a, <clears throat> fuck off, like a parasite in my blood or some bollocks like this here. Uh, that could have been, it wasn't, you know what I mean? So I sat in that machine four hours a day for, I think it was like six or seven days and got this process done and it didn't help. But again, see, I may not be willing to do it. I've still got like a little, little scarf and I put a tube into my neck for it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right here, right, uh, you know, but I uh, forced the tube down into my neck to get it done and made I was there for help, so I'm not going to, if the doctor says this here could stop it, I, I, like, I'll do it, but it, at the same time, I, mean, I already knew this was a lifetime thing. 
And when did they do that? What was that for? The plasma? Is that like dried blood? Is that other people's blood? Uh, it's they, other people's plasma. And they dry it out or something? I'm not sure. Do you think that could, it looked could like have... a big yellow thing full of piss to be fair? Yeah, because yeah, no, I had somebody on that was talking about like, plasma, but I don't know if it's other people's blood to dry the blood out. It's a I concept could... of what's in blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be way a off concept. key here, but do you think that could be a possibility that could have triggered a lot of things for you? Um, Somebody else's blood or whatever? Nah, man. Nah. Uh, I don't think uh, at the same time I wouldn't I, I don't I wouldn't like to think they'd give it to me if it had side effects of making me worse you know but they saying that they're willing to do Karen, fuck their hey you bugs fuck off the Elster Hospital man <laughs> digs <laughs> they were willing to do uh, fucking uh, what do you call that something where to shock my brain to fry my brain electrocute it and hopefully that it resets and I already told them no like I'm not having that done to me. It's it's worse for me than ticks. It is a chance that I'm gonna have a stroke and not be the same at all afterwards. Like I mean, I might have this annoying fucker interrupting me every few. Can I fuck off? Hey, but every few fucking sentences that I try to spit out. But at the same time, I'm still myself, and you can see that as clear as day, mate. I'm still, if as long as I can stick to what I'm passionate at, like like the fucking martial arts, like the like hanging about with the people that have always been about me since before I had ticks. You know what I mean? I have a best friend, mate. She's been my best friend since I was about nine years old, you know, before I had any text while my mum was still alive. I've kept her about, mate, and she reminds me that, fuck, times used to be a lot simpler, and I was still the same guy. You know what I mean? So see when you get out of hospital, are you thinking, did, did you become a recluse? Did you get depressed? Are you thinking, you know what, I'm just going to run with this and have fun? For about four months, I didn't leave the house. Because I was just very, very nervous. Plus, again, the medicine that they put me on were antidepressants, which, again, made me depressed because I didn't need antidepressants. I needed a suppressant. And most suppressants are antidepressants because they're trying to stop the ticks. But at the same time, if they had told me that there was a chance I'm going to think about death and killing myself, I would have never have took them, you know? Uh, so... For about four months, they gave me this pill and it was wiping me out every day at four o'clock. I'd end up having to go to sleep, wake back up, just feeling drowsy, uh, not wanting to leave the house anyway. But at the same time, I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't want people, Karma, fuck off, hey, I did. <clears throat> fuck you, you bitch, go. I didn't, fuck off, hey. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want people to see that side of me because people were so used to the side of me that wasn't the ticks, you know? And I wanted that to stay alive for as long as possible at that point. Yeah. But you can't hide from anything for too long, mate, you know? So see when you go out for the first time, did you do a video first and then if I do blew up and then you went out? No, my auntie used to take me out anyway, like shopping and stuff mm -hmm. like that there. And then that's whenever I, I remember one weird girl coming up to me, he's asking if I was speaking Korean. You know? <laughs> like, the fuck, what? Yeah. Uh, uh, taking all English, <laughs> you know? How is that for the first time when you, do you know you're doing it or do you just? Oh, you're completely conscious, but like it's all subconscious things that come out. So like yeah, I'm there the entire time, mate. I can see people staring at me. I can I can sense the room, you know. But at the same time, like I I can't stop doing it. It's like say I lift this water ball, throw it at your face, mate. Naturally, your hands are gonna come up to your face to protect your face. You're completely aware you're doing that. You you know you're doing that because you have to protect yourself. Same thing. It feels like they're whenever. Hey, fuck hey, when, <clears throat> fuck off! Hey, go. Fuck off, there's constantly a fucking car trying to hit me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm constantly reacting to it. I'm trying to move out of the way. I'm trying to throw something there to put it away. And it's just pressure and pressure and pressure. And then ticks come out. Free that. You know, it, it, it's a it's a situational thing. Like, there's times where I'm sitting in the house and my ticks are calmed down, but my brain's going 100% the entire time. There's times where... I'm able to talk, Karen, fuck off, I'm able, hey, you fucking pedophile bastards, go, I'm able, <clears throat> fuck off, I'm able to talk fluently without ticks interrupting me too bad, but trying to get me to shut the fuck up is difficult, you know? When is it at its worst? When you feel more under pressure out in public? Uh, yeah, it gets worse whenever people be, one, triggering, because there's triggers that people can do, Karma, hey, uh, fuck off, hey, go there, I did videos like the Tourette's alphabet, where people put cameras on me and they start screaming letters at me. And the Tourette's will flip out. And like, it, you always get the letter bang on, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it, the Tourette's flips out in this most exhausting video I've ever did. But at the same time, it makes people happy. And like, 
I'm not gonna lie, mate, views make me happy. I like as you said, mate, at the start, mate, the attention's one way of you making it feel like it's a little bit better. But it's a plaster that gets ripped off and then fucking gives you more problems. How do you feel when people laugh at you? Like I see your videos and I laugh, but obviously sitting here now, man, it's I don't find it funny because I know you struggle with it and obviously I know um the problems you had there at Christmas and stuff like it is sad like what people actually have to go through and yes you're going to outburst and, and make people laugh but when you are doing it and you don't mean to be funny yeah you will uh, become a character at times when you feel as if you need to do it to try and not do it but you know what I mean that people are there watching you you yeah, just want to make them laugh because that's what you're known as but obviously days you're not able to be asked so when you're doing it like and people laugh does that get you down or do you, are you just so frustrates used to it? me frustrates me but I used to not have the balls to stand up to myself for because I used to be scared of disappointing people. I'm a, I'm a people pleaser at the end of the day, mate. I'd do anything to make anybody happy. If, I, mate, if we're outside and I see you shaking and I've got a coat on me, mate, I'm going to give you my coat to please you, to make you happy. I'll sit there and shake in the rain, mate. I don't give a fuck, you know? Uh, yeah. But it frustrates me whenever people laugh and they don't even know why they're laughing. They're just laughing for the sake of, oh, that there was like, unexpected and it's like mate I've lived with this now since I was 17 I expect or 16 sorry I expect it but I don't know when it's coming but whenever it comes mate I, I know what it was I know what happened and like I wasn't doing it to be funny I was doing it because I can't help it and you're sitting here laughing at me making a dick out of me because you don't understand it mm -hmm. but, mate why is the fuck up at times I feel like that you know what I mean but and, then when you're doing the videos to make people laugh like sucking the helium and uh, rapping and reading <laughs> poems and it is funny really? like, I, and then so it'd be hard for people to because people then expect you to be like that 24 7 not oh. understand that you're battling so many different problems I mean, as you said mate, I, I had my own addiction problem but my, i put this down my, the, the feeling like I, i've never been like a real bad addict on like hard drugs mate i, I smoked a lot of weed you know what i mean and i smoked a lot of cigarettes uh, fuck mate, I've got this poem. You don't mind me reading it, do you? Read it, bro. Kind of explains it for me. Uh, can I? Oh, fuck, I will. Hey, fuck off, I will interrupt myself. Uh, so bear with me while I, while I try to read it. And I promise you, it's not a it's not a funny fucking poem. This is no Dr. Zeus. This is something I wrote myself. Can I? Oh, fuck out of my trauma. You know what I mean? While I was in hospital for my psychosis, because that's what happened to me. I, I lost my mind. And I begged God every day for it back. And mate, I put God partly down to the reason I lost it. Yeah, are you a Christian? Yeah, I was born like, well, I was raised um, Catholic, yeah. You raised Catholic, so you have faith in something bigger and better than us? Higher power, definitely now. I've kind of not distanced myself from all religions, yeah. but I believe in a higher power. I believe that everything's connected for a reason. Well, mate, that, I, I genuinely believe God talks to us in ways that is uncomprehendable for man, you know? Man isn't allowed to comprehend it, and when man feels like he does comprehend it, God will punish him. Because... You're not God, man. I'm not God. We are able to create things the way karma, fuck the way God is, but we're not able to understand how He did us. You know what I mean? How He created this place. How, he, and that's what I believe, man. But uh, I believe God gives me gifts, like like being able to talk, even though it's hard to talk. Being able to write music down, even though it's hard to write music down, and being able to look at karma, fuck off. Being able to look at my trauma in a way no one else can. So that, karma, fuck, this is just a poem about cigarettes mate mainly in tobacco and what what smoking something so fucking easy that you can buy at a corner shop for 10 pounds uh, a pack of 20 you know what i mean you can buy it there mate and it's gonna kill you eventually you know what i mean uh let's go cool. i had my first cig at only six years old knocking at death's door since my story's been told mom was disappointed yeah, my fuck, hey, boss. <clears throat> mom was disappointed and well daddy got mad maybe if they had led by example life wouldn't be too bad he told me that day that tobacco would kill him. Still decided to keep light up and his lungs were still filling. Mum took ill and was fighting for her life. God gave her a second chance because he was feeling so nice. Dad liked to gamble for money he was rolling with dice. Sometimes we ate well, sometimes only rice. Came from one hospital, five years later and another. An 11 year old boy is now missing his mother. Tears of karma, fuck off, hey bucks, fuck off. Tears all over my face, I got my first hug from my brother. Daddy lost. Daddy felt lost because he was missing his lover. The funeral was big, but our grief was big, bigger. That was the start of how my trauma was triggered. 
all part of God's plan. It was meant to happen. Behind all the tears, my father kept laughing. Weed went to greed, and Willie wasn't for stopping. I wrote a poem and put it in her coffin. As we hit the next chapter, a story goes on. The boy left his house while his dad hit the bong. We like, can't fucking smoke up, you dickhead. Go, fuck off, hey? <clears throat> What happened in between didn't really matter. Harm it, fuck off, hey, it didn't really matter. An adolescent, as an adolescent man, I'd give up on my father. Cuba was born a fucking mad hatter. Social pressure built and I climbed up the ladder. Gained some respect and I lost a lot too. In five more years, I'd come back to you. It was a fresh start and new to the heart. All me and my father needed was a total restart. I was 17 and on the green already. But alcohol made us talk and got the relationship steady. And Karma, fuck, anytime we, anytime we smoked together, there was some fun and some worry. Not long left, so do it all in a hurry. I took you to Amsterdam twice, but never really had fun once. The city was designed for addicts and cunts. Only rolling up joints, still haven't tried blunts. Trauma affects us all, but weed literally drove me nuts. At least I have faith in a creator. We were catching smoke, but the smoke would catch up later. It was almost 10 years after my mum passed when dad got diagnosed. You don't think the smoke will kill you when you blow it out your nose. Tea will stain your mug, but the smell of death will stain your clothes. The reaper follows you anywhere that tobacco goes. The last two months we had with you were a gift and a curse. A lot of love was shown before we seen you in a hearse. As I try to fin- Karma, fuck, hey. <clears throat> Balls. As I try to finish this poem, my heart is about to burst. My dad died exactly ten years and ten days after ten years and ten days after my mother left this earth. I've done better. I mean, I wrote that in hospital, mean, going through my own mental fucking war, and people say trauma is what brings that on. Mate, I talk to everybody in that hospital, mate, because talking. Is the only way to get better. The only fucking medicine that you need is someone else to relate to. I mean, and something, karma, fuck, something, hey, fuck off. Something I realized by being stuck in that hospital, mate, is that every single person was in there because of trauma, not because of their disabilities, not because of their, their, their mental health issues. Every person went in there was there because they were traumatized in life, and nobody could relate to them. Nobody could talk to them, so they had nowhere else to go. And at that point, mate, I had nowhere else to go, man. So God put me in a hospital where I felt locked up, where I felt mis... I want to say mistreated, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's not not their fault they couldn't trust me, mate. I was never out there to hurt nobody. I didn't hurt anybody, mate. I slacked. Hey, man, fuck off. Hey, said, fuck off. I stood up for myself is the way I see it. Like I, I told cunts they were cunts and kicked them out of my life. And there's times where I didn't do it the right way, mate. And I'll be 100% saying that. I fucking... I hurt some people, mate, emotionally, instead of physically, mate, because not all, all things have to be physical. Like, I hurt people emotionally, mate, and scared the fuck out of them because they weren't used to seeing that side of me. And that's just because I never used to stand up for myself, mate. Just let people walk all the top of you. So, see, when you're 16 and 17, you'll be coming into the limelight when your videos are being viewed millions of times, you're on TV shows talking about it. Did you have a lot of hangers on then because you're becoming a popular name and everybody's wanting to video you and do all these different things? Was there things that people used to video you and you didn't want to do it, but you just felt as if you had to do it to please people? I don't know. Uh, uh, real question is, I don't know. Anytime I see a camera, fuck up, hey, boss. Anytime I see a camera now, mate, that brings out my texts. Because people record me without me even knowing it. People, I can literally sit in a train station and I see a phone flash and I see someone looking at me laughing. You know what I mean? And then I start ticking so they think it's okay to keep going. You know, so the real question is, mate, I don't, I don't know. The tech comes out whenever I see cameras. The guy, who's the Irish guy you went on the show? Whose show were you went oh, on? Oh, Stephen 16? Nolan. Yeah, and that yeah. got viewed millions of times. It was that after the aeroplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bum, hey, fuck, I was, uh, Karma, fuck, hey, I'd already did a video. Karma, fuck off, a video that I got my brother to record of me walking through the airport because that was my first time going through an airport and I wanted to know what the fuck it was going to be like. So I got my brother to record it. And well, mate, that was at that point where I wanted people to see what it was like for me. 
Because, fuck, I would carry my bomb. Hey, fuck off. Drugs in my bag, you bitch. Go. Hey, fuck. At the end of the day, mate, I was, I was learning about my disability because I just had it. Brain disorder, mate, and, and like, it's only going to grow as my brain grows. And your brain's not done developing until you're 23 years old, mate, which I am now. As a man, that's whenever our brain finishes developing, you know? Still young, man. Seeing that you feel as if you do doing those videos at the start, is there sometimes you can play at the camera because you know what people want to see as well? Um, but a bit of acting comes with it as well because you know that people want to see that shit and it makes them laugh but also gives you the attention to try and make you feel good to take you away from your pain. I want to say that... Uh, it was acted out, mate, but there was nothing that I, I acted out tech-wise. I feel like maybe my happiness after the text was a wee bit acted out. You know what I mean? But, like, uh, again, it wasn't because I was happy to be there. I was happy to be doing them things, mate. If I wasn't, I would, I'd like to think I would have stood up for myself, but I couldn't because at the same time, I seen everybody else having fun. I seen everybody else having the crack. And I'm a people pleaser, mate. So I'll let them bring out that side of me and I'll, I'll push that side of me out. But... Mate, half the shit I tick, I can't act. I couldn't even tell you what it was that I tick now. You know what I mean? So, again, I'd say it was played up because of the situation, but it wasn't acted. It's okay people laughing with you, but when it's laughing at you, it becomes a different ball game. Obviously, before the cameras are rolling, me and you are talking, we're having a laugh, we're talking about life, ups and downs. Like, obviously, this is serious, where it's serious, and you can feel that, and you probably feel a bit more calmer. Hey, where, fuck. It's normal, but people are pressuring yeah, you into do this kind of things for their own attention and own laughter. That becomes a different ball game. Kind of Did one big feel... reason I respect you, mate. I told you whenever you first reached out to me that I wasn't in the right space mentally. Mate, and I didn't even know what the fuck was going on with me there, mate. I just lost my dad. Like, mate, what happened to me at that point in time was I'd lost my dad. I'd bro Well, I'd broke up with my girlfriend. Three years we were together, mate. Broke up with her. Uh, again, she's very controlling, very manipulative. Got her way out of me a lot. She didn't even mean to do that, I don't think. She was just trying to love me in whatever way she seemed possible. I lost my part. My part is meant to be with you 50 years, mate. I had him free and he died. And then my dad was diagnosed with cancer and then my dad died. This is all within a month, two months. So that all hit me, mate, and I was partying, I was drinking, and I didn't have control of my own thoughts, mate. I didn't have control of what was going on in my head. I have a lot more control now. So now I felt like the time to let you in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because when I reached out, you never says, pressured me. No, I never. I always used to say, you've always known since you listen, brother, keep your head up and I'll always yeah. here if you need me. And everything's about timing. 100, mate. You Do you know what I mean? Everything's about timing. Just people, mate. The yeah. way for you, mate. That, yeah, that's a lot of respect for you for that, that. that. And you're still here, mate. You showed up. Whenever the time was right, you showed up. It's all part of God's plan in my eyes, bro. Yeah, but you've got a mass following as well. It's just a case of picking the ball up again you're in a better headspace you can utilise it to your advantage and make a good life Mid you've got you've got this whatever it is you've got like, you, why not just fucking run with it because you do like laughing you do like to make people laugh yes it can become draining but do you know what you've not let it defeat you I'd imagine a lot of people with Tourette's that maybe stay in the house and they just hide away everything, everything I've seen on the TV yeah. they've made Tourette's look like clowns and jokers there was kids in Glasgow and it was like they used to do it in Scotland. They done one. I was shouting, "I'm up to my knees in cow part and fucking this and that." And people are laughing. People are treating it as a comedy show. It ain't a fucking comedy show when you actually sit down with somebody to and actually figure out what the fuck they're going through. But everything that's edited together, it makes it look like it's funny and it's a laugh. And the people with Tourette's are enjoying it. But I did the same thing to myself though. Yeah, I did the same thing to myself, mate. Because I thought that's what people wanted to see, and the, the people bringing out them documentaries like the BBC, they want to get what people want to see not what's real and made the people sitting in them chairs doing Harm, I fuck, I hate it, fucks, doing them interviews they're saying what they think people want to hear you know they're not saying what's actually going on because as you know yourself mate being vulnerable is harder than what it is to be funny you know what I mean yeah. but it must be an advantage from it because see if you don't like some cunt is there a way to go, you, you fucking baldy bastard? Is there a way? You know what I did to Steph? I got the baldy fuck. No, yo, yo. No, what I did to Steph, mate, I found a hair bubble sitting over there. I handled it to him. I said, yo, Steph, is this yours? Is this yours, mate? I think you yeah. lost this. <laughs> but there is a way, like, if you don't like something, you can get away with it, kind nah, of be past like, you, you fucking... I, I'm so straightforward, mate, as yeah. you can tell, mate. I, I don't uh -huh. hide myself, mate. And this, again, mate, not that I feel like a... I admit everything happens for a reason. You know, I don't feel like I was chosen to have Tourette's in them. You know what I mean? I feel like, uh, mate, I just got it. You know, but 
I, I tell you what, the worst thing can have happened to a better fucking person for it anyway, mate, because I made one of, Karma, one of, hey, fuck off, one of the reasons I kept going was because people kept asking me to keep going, and it wasn't them cunts laughing at me, tagging their friends, saying, oh, I'm going to go to hell for laughing at this, which happened all the time, it wasn't them cunts telling me I was faking my disability, them cunts put me in hospital, what it was is them people popping up to me and saying, you know what, my son, my daughter's got Tourette's, and they've just had to fucking listen to everybody they know putting them down. You know what I mean? Everybody in school mate, reclusing them, mate, pushing them away because they don't want to be around them. Because most people don't have the funny side of Tourette's, mate. Most people with Tourette's have the unfit. Karma, fuck off, hey, bugs. Just have the physical fucking f physical tics or the, the calm little things where they, they have like hip calm fuck off they have like a head which is backwards or sneezes or coughs or grunts or just weird things where you look at somebody in school and say what the fuck's wrong with him you know what I mean and then they're getting bullied they're getting separated from groups you know what I mean and see people texting me saying see the way you've came out with your disability and the way you handle your disorder I want my son to handle it like that I want my daughter to handle it like that. She's watched your videos. Now she holds on to friends. She she doesn't hide who she is. She goes out. She understands what what the world thinks of her. And she doesn't give a fuck anymore because you don't give a fuck. Did you get that? People saying that you mate, were acting? Mate, oh, did I get it, mate? Did I get it, bro? People, people till this day still come up to me in the streets and ask you, do you actually have that there? Or really? what's the crack? You know, and I'm like, mate, what the fuck would I actually get out of this? Mate, I, I, I've I made a few bob off fucking YouTube videos, you know what I mean? Whenever it was actually really fucking blew up and I didn't even know how to make money of that till my big brother showed me, you know what I mean? So it's not like I ever went out of my way to do it for money, you know? I didn't want people to know about it for such a long time that I thought if I do one video here, the people around my local area won't be able to ask me questions because, mate, Belfast is a fucking hard place to live, you know? See if someone's got a problem with you, mate, they're not going to hold it back from you. You know, if you if they feel like you've been a dickhead to them, mate, they're going to be a dickhead straight back to you. And mate, I was never trying to be a dickhead to anybody, but I was terrified that someone was going to chin me for just leaving the house. So I figured, you know what, I have to put this out here. Because, yes, my friends knew, my family knew, but the shopkeeper down the street didn't know. And mate, I felt like everybody needed it to know. Otherwise, I wasn't safe. Yeah, how is that then if you don't the person doesn't know who you are and you're shouting him out? Has anybody ever tried to put it on you or hit you or anything? Um, thank fuck, mate, no one's tried to hit me because I wouldn't want to go to jail. <laughs> you know that as I told you, mate, I'm training for a fight here in April. I've been in martial arts since I was thirteen because of my anger issues whenever I was a kid. You know, just getting in the fights over stupid shit, mate. And it's shit to say it, mate, but I'd, I I would have been the one to hit first over words. Cause mate, I've got this male ego. You know what I mean? Someone's disrespected me. I need to physically attack them to get my fucking macho-ness out. Show them girls that I am the man. And that's not the way about it, lad. Like, a real man understands that fists aren't the way to fucking deal with things. Keep that shit for the gym. Where it's wanted. You know? No one actually wants wants that shit. You know? Really? Yeah. Sorry, mate. That, you go, that was bro. a question, bro. <laughs> well, really? Your cameras? Because I, I used to have... Uh -huh. uh, Nick used to work on a show and he had a stutter. Great kid, man. Really good guy. And what the fuck on this podcast but sometimes you used to see different like it was calm like sometimes they'd answer the phone and the stutter wouldn't be there or like um, sometimes working I'm a workhorse man so sometimes it, it would come if we were working harder like, is there times when you're at more your calmest when you don't really notice that you even have Tourette's oh mate 100 whenever when I'm, is that see a dog mate yeah and whenever me and him's chilling doing our own thing and he's distracting me from the rest of the world mate because his loyalty is unconditional you know, he never expect. Karma, hey, hey, fuck off! He never expects anything other than me from walk some food. <laughs> as long as I give him walk some food, mate, he <laughs> he's sound on me. Mm -hmm. You know, so see, we never were in bed, mate. When I tick and I see him jump out of bed and run away, it gives me time to sit there and go, "What the fuck is that about, scruff? Come here and calm me down." So like, oh, I admit that whenever I'm able to to get myself out of my ticks, which isn't fucking easy, mate, and it's not something you can just do. It's situational, you know. Whenever I'm sat at home not thinking about other people looking at me, other people watching me, other people being about, I feel like I can get out of that there side of things. But then I'll tick and disturb that there. But at the same time, see for them R, two hours, three hours tops <laughs> that it would be that I can unrecognize it, mm -hmm. I feel weird. Also in the mornings too, mate. In the mornings, mate, whenever I wake up, I, I notice the first one because I've went, 
about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, went down, stuck on the kettle, heard the click in the kettle, and that that clicks made me tick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, little things like that there, man. Like, uh, uh, and I really noticed the time apart, you know what I mean, whenever that first one comes on. What about when you're sleeping? Um, I've been told that I take them asleep the odd time. I have woke myself up maybe twice, you know? But uh, getting to sleep is pretty easy, isn't it? Can't fuck, hey, fuck off as long as I burn out all my energy. Like, uh, fuck, Kylie's here. She stayed with me over my isolation because I had COVID there. Fuck me, another rough, rough end to Christmas. The psychosis hit me. Finally got out of the hospital, mate. The paranoia is still there from all the weed. You know what I mean? So, like, fucking horrible. <laughs> but then, like, I start to go out a wee bit. And then start to come out of my shell a wee bit, and then boom, get hit with COVID, have to isolate again. Fucking another shit show, but Kylie, sickness and health shit, or sickness or in health shit, came along and did isolation with me, thank fuck, because I would not have been able to bear that stuff alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's certain things that trigger it. What about when you're shagging and stuff? Yeah. Like, is, it, is it, mate? Ah, uh, nah, not really. Yeah, nah. Sometimes, though. Sometimes it's again situational, like the odd time that'll happen. Uh, I've seen, like, uh, I've never met a wee girl to love it. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but is it everything it doesn't trigger then? Like you're just shouting out fucking the things like... The odd time it has, mate. But like, again, mate, I've Do seen... you just laugh then? Nah, mate, nah. Like, there's never been a... Uh, you, <laughs> that was great. It's been like, you, why'd you stop? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But fuck, hey, bollocks. Hey, fuck off it. <laughs> Calling myself out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's mad that like, well, there's it. certain things that trigger it, certain things that don't let... Like, it's trying to find that thing that focus, mate. Makes focus it your is the most calm. It's what about when you're doing your jujitsu and stuff? Oh, like? mate, I have to tell people the odd time, like, because it's very calm on the mats. Because at the same time, mate, you're so focused on not dying, not having this cunt rip my arm off, not having this cunt, not having my fellow teammate <laughs> rip my arm off or try to choke me out or kick me in the face or hit me in the face. That you're just there. And plus, again, mate, I've been doing that since before I ever had threats, you know? So. Whenever I'm on the mat, mate, it's kind of natural not to. Whenever it does happen, it not pisses people off, but it stops them. But I tell them not to do that because, mate, I guarantee the person I fight. Because it has happened in sparring again where I've been I'm having the better or someone. And then I tick and then they fucking go, right, this is my time, get the cunt. Because at the same time, mate, spars a light fight, controlled fight. If you're with there with two people that know how to control the tempo, it's beautiful. If you're with there when someone is gotten the ego and they want to go in there and win yeah uh, you know not so no. beautiful it turns into a wee bit of a scrap mm -hmm. and whenever you hurt somebody a wee bit and then their ego goes they want to hurt you back so if they can if I, if I, hey fuck off if i tick and let my hand out and my head twist away and i can't see you i, I get hit you know what i mean yeah. which again i want people to do though uh, it sounds so fucked up you've boxed yourself mate you yeah. understand it uh, there's a love for it there's a love for the pain. Uh, there's a fucking need for the pain, mate. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're in there, mate, you need to get crashed one to wake up. Whenever you wake up, mate, that's whenever you're alive. But uh, I, I've had to tell sparring partners and jujitsu partners a few times, you know, don't don't stop. Just like just keep going while I tick, because like in a fight, which I'm planning for, no one's gonna give me that their second to wise up. You know what I mean? They're, they're gonna get on top of me and take advantage of that. Yeah. It's mad that though, because I think it was X Factor. There was a kid with Tourette, uh, not Tourette, it's like a heavy stutter. But then when he sung, there was no stutter. And he sung like a fucking angel. Like, and then when he started speaking after the song, he, was, he would just go off in one. Yeah. But like, do you think that then keeps you sane, the fighting kind of side of things? 100. 100%, mate. That keep, it keeps me on a straight and narrow path. It gives me goals and gives me. Gives me a group of people that also understand what it's like to be free shit. Because nobody in their right mind is going into an MMA gym. In fact, no one in their right mind sticks to an MMA gym or a boxing gym or a kickboxing gym. A combat sport, unless they have been through something. You know? No one. Realistically, mate, if you're going in there to smack another man in the face and get hit in the face or try to break someone's arm, you're either doing that because, one, you need to learn how to defend yourself because you have anxieties being about in the street. Two, you like that feeling of fighting because you've been in fights outside in the street and you've got a hit from it. You know, you've got your high off it. Or free <laughs> shit to say, mate. You've been in fights at home with your family. And again, not that there was a high off it, but you've won a couple and it gave you a good feeling. For me, it was the anger shit in the streets. 
like starting fights over stupid things. So my auntie fought. I don't know, fuck, I hate it, but <clears throat> when my mum died, mate, I went to live with my auntie because, again, mate, I got in a fight in the house with one of my friends, mate. I was only 13. Uh, again, always over a fucking girl, mate, isn't it? Always a woman. Uh, they took the piss out of me because I had feelings for a girl that I didn't really have feelings back or at least she wouldn't talk about it in front of other people. And I, I, I ended up getting my knee broke. Um, shattered it in a couple of places and one bone hit another bone another bone hit another bone went in the hospital for two yeah, I'm not, fuck off, eh? not telling anybody which fucking knee it is because cunts will take advantage of that yeah, and never made it <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so after I broke my knee mate uh, I still believed I was the bad boy you know what I mean look at me and my cast <laughs> I remember one time at school smacking a wee man with the crutches and fucking he digged me a couple of times and I went well that was a stupid thing to do why did I do that you know I remember another time this guy fucking coming into school with pots and pans for an HE exam and me being like mate your dev she literally told us not to do that and he turned around and me like I break your other knee so I just grabbed the crutches mate hop over to him and smack him on <laughs> he hit me back and I was like well Again, stupid thing to do here, lad. Why are you still trying to do this? But uh, I remember whenever I eventually left my dad's mate and got out of that there no discipline place, I went in with my auntie. And my auntie was too much discipline on me, if you ask me. But she put me into jujitsu after my second street, my second school fight with her. Uh, she put me into jujitsu because again, I'm a fuck, hey, it fucks. I, I, <clears throat> this time it wasn't somebody my age or bigger. It was a kid. Uh, he's same age, two years younger than me, but at the same time, mate, he was a first year, I was a third year, should not have hit him. And again, mate, I've already said sorry to him for it. Uh, fuck, mate, I, I believe the reason for it was just, not going to get too much into it, mate. But after I hit the smaller kid, it was time for me to learn how to discipline myself. Time for me to get hit by the bigger man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I knew how that felt, and uh, it worked. What is the old anger start? I mean, I've always been angry, mate. Always, mate. Kind of live in a hostile environment with mum and dad? Not a hostile environment, I wouldn't say. Like, they would be verbally abusive to each other. A, a wee bit, you know what I mean? But it was never to the extent where fucking fights would break out between them. It would, they would break up, they would get back together, they'd break up, they'd get back together. But love ain't perfect, bro. We're people, we're not perfect. And, like, I understand that for losing them. You know what I mean? They, they weren't perfect, but they, had, they both had their really good points. And karma, fuck, hey, folks, they were both smart, they were both caring, they were both passionate, you know? Did you have suicidal thoughts when your mum passed? Mate, uh, I remember being 11 and tying a, a little string around my neck, mate, and just squeezing it. But I wasn't ever thinking about killing myself. I was just thinking, I wonder how this would go. I never had the thought, like, you this is going to kill me, you know? Scream out for help. Uh, I wouldn't even say it that way, mate. I'd just say it as a curious little boy. You know? At least that's how I felt in my head. But it's still sad thoughts to have at 11 years old to think that as well and, and, and not contemplating it, but try to experience it as well. Yeah, mate. It's not, it's the, sad. F not the point that you, you, you could have died, mate. It's the point you wanted to. Yeah. But at the same time, mate, 11 years old, I didn't know what death was, mate. All I knew was that my mummy wasn't here, mate, and I wanted to be with her. You know? I had no idea that I could leave people behind me and they'd be feeling the same way about me. All I thought was, mum's gone. This place is pretty shit in the minute. Like, shit crack here. Better crack with her. It was the wrong way to think, mate, but it's God's honest truth. Did you ever speak to anybody about it at that age? I was told my auntie. My auntie got me into some fucking suicide prevention thing, mate, which again, mate, the fucking nurse, whatever they called me, the counsellor, tried to get me to act like a rhino. You know what I mean? Some strange shit, Mitch. What do you mean? Well, what's your favourite animal? I'm like a rhino. <laughs> should like pretend to be a rhino. I'm like, huh? No so wonder you lost your shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just not fuck up. <laughs> mate, don't worry. I've been, I've been in and out of counselling. I've been in and out of counselling since my ma died, mate. I've been in and out of psychiatry since since my my head went with the ticks. Uh, with since I got brain disorder, mate, they were trying to figure out what happened to me, mate. I think God just threw a challenge at me, mate, and I've, I've accomplished the challenge, mate. I'm trying to use it to my advantage, trying to help people, trying to fucking spread awareness about it. And granted, mate, I don't think the way hey, fuck off hey folks hey fucking pedophile bastards fuck off go hey the fucking dickhead go 
Sorry, that was right in your guys' ears. Oh, Steph, <laughs> mate, I'm so that sorry. That was aimed at you as well, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, mate, we're not getting into that. <laughs> <laughs> is, that is that, see, when you hit your head and stuff, is that sore? Yeah. Do you ever bust your nose or give yourself a black eye? I've busted my nose once or twice, like, but uh, very rare, I mate. Mean, it's usually all the top of the head. The worst thing that's happening is I'm killing more fucking brain cells. <laughs> 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 Again, mate, I smoked so much weed the last two years, mate, that barely got any left, I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but it's see when you started getting um, all the attention and all those shows and the Channel 4 shows and your stuff on YouTube's viewed millions of times, you've got nearly a million followers on Facebook. Like, how was that feeling for you? Did you enjoy that kind of wave of pressure? Meant at the start, it was good to see that people were having the crack with it, but it was always pressure meant whenever people started tagging their friends and then everybody's like, Yo, you need to turn this on public. Everybody wants to see this. So then I was like, mate, what? how do I do that? You know what I mean? Like, what, what do you mean, public? You know, and it's and like, you're only 16, 17 at this time. Mate, that, oh, I, mate, that, I knew how to work Facebook, I knew how to work like Snapchat and stuff. Like, obviously, mate, I talk to birds, you know, <laughs> you know. But looking back, but at I did that, like for words and all that, there, yeah. <laughs> but looking back at it, did, did you feel used like a circus act? I, uh, yeah, a wee bit, but. Again, I'll let it happen, so I can't really say that. that yeah, I'm not, fuck off, go, you cunt, eh? Bugs. I can't really say that fucking. <sighs> I, I don't know what to think of it, mate, to be fair. I'll let it happen. Because when you think about it, you're only 16 years old, you're just a baby. Do you know what I mean? You're getting put on TV shows and TV, and yes, it's great and it's great exposure, but you don't, you don't know how to use that then. I'm in my 30s and I still don't really know how to utilise it properly because it's still scary. For people to know who you are now and people try to, because you and and I believe I'm on the ball with certain things, but it just become you become more of a recluse and it's, mm. it's weird, it's weird. Attention is weird. Like I, I craved it for so long and now I realize it's so fake because even social media, it's not real, it's not, it's just an electronic um, device where you feel connected to people. But you're, even if you just come off it, nobody really cares. As soon as you come off it, mate, it's like an adrenaline dump, mm -hmm. you know, you don't you feel worthless. When did you start, let's see when you started getting the height of your attention like on YouTube, your videos are views millions of times, Facebook. Was there any other time you just felt drained and tired that you were just going to take a step back or were you just thinking, do as much as I can to try and get as much as tension as I can because the tension I'm getting is making me feel a wee bit better. It's kind of numbing the pain that you were going through. No, nah, mate, I, whenever it came to the attention, mate, I, I, I would more like the respect side of it. And like I was able to leave the house and people were not recognizing me, mate. I, I preferred, to, like, as you say, mate, the social media shit felt fake. Whenever you're in the street stone, people are sitting there coming up to you and saying, oh, bro, mate, you're a fucking legend. I liked that at the start. People stopped me for photos. Then I went to my first concert, mate. Avicii, mate. And fucking one. Karma. Hey, it went. Hey, Karma. Plus, I got this award for Heroes of the Youth. And like, again, mate, people were calling me a hero. Mate, I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing to help people because no one was coming up to me and saying, you know what? You got me through this, you got me through that. And whenever the were, mate, oh, it's too stuck on my head. It's too vain, kind of, you would say, mate. They understand that someone else was going through their own problems. Because I'd, I'd went through my own problems, mate, but I'd, I'd, I'd help. But it felt like I was going through it alone because no one must already understand. When did it start turning negative for you? When did it start becoming a burden? The attention, the messages? and Mate, from my first concert. My first concert, mate, I couldn't enjoy it. My oh, friend wait. stitched me because well, that's a big place, mate, and cunts keep grabbing me because they feel like they know me. They are my friend, mate, in their heads. You know what I mean? And I don't know them. But oh, at the same time, uh, 16 again, 17. 17, mate, whenever I went to my first concert. And uh, mate, whenever I tell you it was six hours of me looking for people that I know and being grabbed by people that I don't for a photo for them is to throw up on their Instagram or Facebook to get a few likes and me not being able to trust any of them because at the same time I have real bad trust issues man. Uh, as you could tell me it took two years to get this happening <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah it's fucking it's mad but uh, that was the start whenever I realised that this isn't a good thing as much as like uh, people are telling me I'm doing a good thing for it for me this isn't feeling like a good thing anymore it's feeling like i'm being as you say used like mate i felt used at that point mate and after that and that's whenever i started to not enjoy people grabbing me for a photo unless they came up to me with a wee bit more respect 
And that's when I started standing up for myself whenever people were coming up to me and going, oh, there's your tech boy. There's your tech boy. It's like, no, mate, my name's Lewis Nickel. Learn that before you start calling me tech boy. Because, mate, I might have Therese and I might have showed my ticks off to you. But, mate, you don't fucking know me from Adam, lad. If you're going to come up to me and ask for a photo and ask me for my time out of my day whenever I could be, do- whenever I could be doing something a wee bit better for me, you know what I mean? At least know my fucking name. Yeah, try to get a bit more respect of people. But it's difficult then if people have just seen you as that character who's just shouting at people and... Says my name right above the video, bro. Yeah, Yeah. but people just... Lad, Bible credit me, lad. (laughs) People don't see that. I don't know what people don't see. No, people don't give a fuck enough to read into it, man. People fucking character, and that's the hard part. When did it really start taking its toll, though, on your mental health? When did it... What was the, the breaking point for you where you thought, fuck this, enough is enough? Mate, again, I don't feel like the tech boy ever did take a toll, really. It was more the smoking weed and being too paranoid about it, you know what I mean? And reading into the comments. Like, that, that's the biggest thing, mate. I'd be a very, again, I'd be uh, another thing to do with Tourette's in there, mate, is you're very easy manipulated by people. At least I feel like that. I am either way, mate. If someone was to suggest something or if I felt like I could do something to impress somebody, I'd do it. You know what I mean? People pleasing shit. And most people with Tourette's are people pleasers. You know, from my experience anyway, we, we're willing to put ourselves out of our comfort zone to help other people. Again, I haven't met a lot of people with Tourette's, mate. I've met a few people who have had the opportunity to, you know. And what's that like with other people with Tourette's? Is it fucking horrible? It's horrible. It's exhausting. In what way? Hey, fuck it. Hey, <clears throat> fuck. Uh, ticks trigger my ticks. I can't watch it. Horrible. Fuck off. I can't watch my own videos without ticking. And I can't saying that I watched a live stream earlier in the bath. Weird as fuck. Yes, I watched myself in the bath. You should do it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Why they say that? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets edited here, bro. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I made it. Uh, like I can't watch my own videos without setting myself off. And that's fucking horrible on the editing studio, mate. You're literally exhausted by the time you've edited a video. Uh, like. I don't have money to pay an editor, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do that shit on my own. Uh, I can't watch other people's threats worse than I can't watch mine. You know what I mean? Because I, I was there, I did mine. Like, I remember-ish what happened. Uh, but what... Yeah, I'm, fuck off, hey. Watching, fuck off, watching somebody else's ticks sets me off drastically. I did one with your man, the Scottish boy, John Davison. Yeah. And John, hey, fuck off, John. Go, John, fuck off, John. John's name, Garmel, box. John's name's a trigger for me from, Garmel, fuck off, from uh, uh, the Benidorm trip. you seen the video of me on the plane shouting at the ho- air hostess. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, Garmel, fuck the plane, hey, fuck off, the plane over was worse than that plane back. No one got that in video. You know? The plane over was way worse. Why? We, fuck, mate, there was us, us sitting at the front, mate, with a few people and mate it was just pressure <laughs> pressure on the lads holiday mate you ever been out with the boys of course you have mm-hmm. you know what it's like there mate everybody's got to be having the fun everybody's got to be having the crack whenever you see somebody there and it's not like a, it, it kind of is an attention thing mate whenever the attention's took off you mate and through somewhere else is whenever my ticks come out worse because it's not me crying for the attention mate it's just my tick gets fucking worse whenever I'm meant to be quiet you know, it's like maybe it is an attention thing, but I don't fucking know, bro. There's no expert to sit there and tell me this shit. It's not looked into enough for someone of a medical professional to sit and tell me this. And as much as I want to trust myself with it, man, again, I have a lot of fucking trust issues with it. I don't trust myself at all. I'm literally just out of depression, just out of being suicidal, you know. And again, Tourette's, man, it's up and down depression. It's like in a day, man, I could be feeling great. I could be feeling shit. It's all, it's all in me. If I do stuff to make myself feel better, I'm gonna feel better. But if I, if I get a bit lazy, mate, or if I go out drinking, I mean, I'm gonna spend that whole next day feeling like, why the fuck am I even here? You know. What's your text like with a hangover? <sighs> Whenever the depression kicks in, mate, it's it's not too bad, on text wise. But again, I'm so fucking exhausted from from life, mate. It, it's shit, you know? But if I put myself out there at the minute with a hangover, mate, whenever I put myself out there in bad situations, like like whenever you wake up, mate, and you feel groggy from the drink, mate, instead of sitting in bed for them after a few hours, mate, I get my learning shoes on, put on my shorts, and I get out of the house. 
I'd to grab the scruff of mate and me and him go for a run. You know? No matter how many hours sleep I've had, I get up at half eight and I'll go out for that fucking run. Because if I don't go out for that run, mate, I'm going to sit in the bed and I'm going to feel like shit. What you like when you're running? Excellent. Like, whenever um, I'm out there and I'm hitting a street, mate, and I start picking up my pace a wee bit, uh, I feel good. Because, mate, in my head, I'm always there. I'm always going. Like, whenever I'm not talking, mate, I'm always thinking. I can't listen too good. I'm starting to work on it. But, like, I'm... Oh, Karen, oh, fuck off, hey. It's whenever I'm running and using my body and I'm not letting myself have a second, I keep going. And I keep going and I keep going. You know? Whenever I stop to have a second and then I see somebody else, I'll tick. And I'll tick and I'll tick. But then I've got to snap out of it and keep running. Like, whenever I stop to talk to people, mate, that's whenever it gets worse. Whenever I open my mouth, <laughs> you know? I'm also thinking about it too, mate, and triggers it. What's it? Have you ever been pulled by the police? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Have they ever yeah. says, right, you, you're fucking at it, get in the van. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, no. Uh, well, once, but uh, thank fuck there was a lot of people around me that sit there and have my back. But at the same time, mate, I don't think he wanted me because of my tics. You know, mm -hmm. he wanted me because I was drunk on the street being a bit of a dickhead. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I have tics. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a difference there. Like, but he didn't get me in the van. The social media does have its privileges. Like, uh, a lot of people came around him and he realised that if he put me in that van, it was going to make a shit lot worse. What you like when you're on the booze, you're more relaxed and not and less tics? in the situation, mate. I've had tick fits on, a tick fits uncontrolled, caramel, fuck off, hey, it's uncontrollable uh, ticks for anywhere between a few minutes to an hour to a couple of hours. And mate, that is the most exhausting physical exercise you'll ever do. Uh, you could run 5k easier, <laughs> you know, you could spar six rounds easier. Whenever you have a tick fit, mate, you're constantly screaming, you're constantly moving, and it's all violent. You're you're hitting yourself, you're beating yourself off walls, mate. You're 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 struggling to walk so someone needs to carry you. And if you're not being carried, mate, you're laying on the ground. It's it's my anxiety riled up to its fucking top and you can't cry because I don't know why. It's like an overwhelming you, you ever feel like you need to cry, mate? And you just can't get a tear out. Yeah. It's like that feeling of just pure overwhelming. And eventually, whenever you cry, mate, you blubber up like a little fucking baby and you can't move because you're just crying. It's that, but with ticks. No tears. Just pure and other ticks. How frequently does that happen? <sighs> it's getting a lot less-ish because I've been such a kind of open person with it and I'm able to talk. But now you're saying twice a year. It's been... How, how often I feel like it happens sometimes it, at the start a wee bit more and again my brain disorder changes I can't fuck off hey, it fucks my brain disorder changes every my, well my whole life that's what I've been told you know by somebody that doesn't have Tourette's do my neurologist he's just a brain doctor so he can only go off what other people tell him but uh nah, it'll change my entire life at times it'll get better at times it'll get worse It'll always change. What were you like when you were stoned? Were you not tripping balls, man? Um, mate, I, I'm part of that 3%. Yeah. Uh, there's 3% of people that get uh, psychosis of smoking weed, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm part of them. Huh? Another, another rare fucking thing. Well, another, another label, mate. Why not throw an extra one on? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Is that, did you, were you more relaxed? Did you forget about you had the text? Or does, that, oh, does it, man. no matter if you're drinking, taking drugs, that still triggers anything. It's all anytime. situational, mate. It's all situational. Environment, friends, like, yeah, you're very all... calm here and I believe it's the environment, but do you just feel like fucking moving into the woods then? Just buy loads of dogs and just <laughs> fucking... Uh, you... mate, that's the angle. Yeah. That's the fucking angle when every... if the UFC don't pan out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even if the UFC does pan out. Like, again, I haven't even had my first amateur fight. This here is called manifesting and God-given gifts. <laughs> mm. uh, mate, genuinely that is my end goal I want to have a house out in the woods and a shitload of dogs you know uh, again what I would like to do is like I've trained Scruff myself mate and he, he's a chill fucking dog mate he's a good dog he, he can walk off lead he can he, he, whenever I have panic attacks anxiety attacks he comes over and he's there for me because his loyalty is 100% mm -hmm. and mate 
eventually I want to be at that point where I can train other people's dogs, bring them into my house, train them up to do the things that my dog can do and then give them back to them. Like I would love to have like a dog farm that was good for that. But again, you're talking retirement sort of thing there, bro. Like I, I wouldn't want to spend my life doing that now, mate. I'd need to focus on myself now. And that's what people's been telling me since I came out of the Mental Health Institute was you need to focus on yourself. Stop worrying about other people. But again, people pleaser, mate. Can't just stop worrying about other people, mate. If someone's upset at me, mate, I take that shit very personally. You know? If someone's upset and I, and I love them, mate, I take it very personally. And it can have fuck all to do with me. Like, uh, I will sit up till four o'clock in the morning thinking about what the hell I'd done to make you feel like that. Mate, it doesn't matter what I'm doing the next day. I'll, I'll sit up and I'll think. How many different doctors have you seen? what for just for like Tourette's they'll give you different answers and say you can take this it can help it this way or is it just all the same shit they say every time Tourette's specifically I've seen two I've seen my neurologist Dr John McConville one of the most respected neurologists in the country and in the UK I've seen a psychiatrist I can't remember her name but her building's actually just straight down the road that way so we're on the Lisburn Road now you go on down this here side mate and she's I couldn't tell your name, bro. I couldn't. It was such a long time ago. But mental health wise, mate, I went into the Ulster. Oh, fuck, I hate it, dogs. Through my psychosis, mate, I went into the Ulster. They fuck off, hate it, dogs. I also believe my my brain disorder caused a lot of of the most obscene shit that my psychosis was going on, mate. Because I didn't hurt nobody, mate. I didn't physically go out of my way to hurt somebody. And I've heard people go through psychosis, mate, and they hear and see things, and it brings out a bad side of them. Or they kill people, quite literally, have murdered people. I mean, that, that's just not in me. I'm not that person. So that's why I believe I didn't hurt nobody. You know what I mean? When did that happen? Uh, the 4th of December. 14th of December, maybe. Just two months ago, was that? Yeah. yeah. And what was that experience? Was that your worst experience ever? Was that a total breakdown? It wasn't my worst experience ever. Again, losing... My mum and my dad has been the worst experience I've ever went through. I've lost friends. I've lost people at 22 years old dying of random heart problems. You know, death is my worst experience ever. Uh, shit for me to go through was the psychosis, but it's humbled me a lot. Because, mate, they put me in the hospital where I went in with no food, no money, no personal possessions. I broke my phone out of a, a rage where I blacked out. Well, no, it wasn't even a rage where I blacked out. I threw it at my brother. Because, well, I don't throw it at him, I threw it in his direction to scare the fuck out of him because he pissed me off quite a lot and I didn't want to hurt him. So I used my phone as a fucking pure example of this thing cost a lot of money and is very important to me. He's pissed me off more than anything and this is in my hands so I'm going to wing it. <laughs> you know, if I wanted to hit him with it, made that pretty good aim. You know, I could throw a banana skin and that in from here, backwards. Yeah. <laughs> you think that was just a, a build up then from your mum and the weed and just that time of... I think it was from my dad, mate. From my dad died. Karma, fuck, hey, so obviously, I told you whenever my mum died, me and my dad went off a different path. Mm -hmm. uh, we got back on that path, mate. I went homeless. I've been technically homeless since I was 17. I moved out of my auntie's, mate. Went into my sister's, slept in her armchair for about three, two, three months. Slept in her armchair. Uh, came out of there, went back to my dad's house. He got evicted within two, three months again. And from there, I've been in emergency housing. But whenever I went back to my dad's house, obviously me and him had a lot of shit to figure out. Whenever I was in the hospital with the five weeks for Tourette's, uh, he came up and seen me. Me and him had the crack with each other. And we were able to kind of get over it, but we didn't talk about it. I went back to his house, and that's where that poem, like, alcohol made our relationship steady. Shout out to Buckfast, mate. I had a bottle of Bucky and me. He was sitting on the Bushmills whiskey, mate. And we sat and we cried together, mate. You know, we figured it out. And... He apologised for his part in it. I didn't feel like I had anything to apologise for apart from not being loyal to him whenever I felt like he wasn't loyal to me. So I, we figured shit out. And we got back on a good path. And whenever I say smoke, like... My dad was a funny fucker, man. You know? I remember one time 
he he never got paranoid on me like I'm a fucking hey boss I do you get very paranoid whenever so I smoke I, bro. yeah I used to trip balls <laughs> I don't even know why I smoked it mate. <laughs> we had, uh, like we had, one of my first times doing bongs and I had my hands in my pocket and was doing this here like fucking like a motorbike mate. like a motorbike on the way home mate. and every time I did this my fucking hips got moving <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> fucking speeding up yeah. but I remember one time smoking in his house smoking bongs with him and then having this paranoid fit that I didn't lock my house and something bad was going to happen to my big brother. And my dad turned around to me and going, yo, look, 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 the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to go home and he's dead. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and mate, sent me fucking boogaloo, mate. I remember another time, my dad, my dad had strange friends, mate, paramilitary friends, friends that uh, had been done in by paramilitaries and there was this one guy that had a six pack done to him, asked whenever to get your, fuck, hey, it looks to get your arms shit through them get your knees shit through them and I think it's your ankles and shit through them and like this guy was fucked mate he had been selling meth to kids or some shit mate so that's why he got done in. and uh, he gave me two, a big bong mate two little nuggets that I busted up mate and put into a bong and mate shit you not everybody in that room had something out to get me mate they were all planning on ratting on me to the fucking cops or some shit mate and I was gonna get put in jail forever mate you know what I mean and they got I don't even know what the fuck I was being paranoid about, mate. I just remember looking at them thinking none of them there trusted me. None of them wanted me there. All of them were out there to get me. And I was going to jail. You know? I sat there like, why? Like, and cameras and all in the room, mate, too, is what I'm saying. Cameras used to freak me the fuck out, mate. Because I know this going out to a few hundred thousand people, mate, maybe a few million people. Maybe not even, you know what I mean? But like, I, camera, fuck, I know it's, hey, fuck off, hey. <clears throat> I know it's people that's not in this room right now they're going to see it and I don't know who them people are you know and that that makes me paranoid on the weed mate that makes me ten times worse because that's all I can think about is who's watching me who's watching me who's watching me and mate I had this big bong mate and I just broke down in front of them all mate couldn't couldn't explain why you know and I know I'm not the only person like that as you said yourself mate do you get fucking boogaloo on it a wee bit mate and I know friends that have went boogaloo on it you know, but I still believe it is a good fucking thing if you use it right. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a medicine, man. Otherwise, if people could overdose on it, and that's the thing that no, fuck, hey, nobody can overdose on weed. Nobody can even attempt to because it's impossible. You know, you could smoke your own body weight and then maybe that'll kill you. But it's not going to be the marijuana that kills you. It's going to be you smoked yourself out. It was the pizzas that was killing me, bro. <laughs> 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 so it was. I believe that. Don't agree with it now because I believe everybody should be in a conscience for them. I, like, I smoked it for twelve years, but I still believe that it did save my life because I was on when I was on the booze of the gear. It took me to different heights of aggression. The weed took me back, and made us a recluse to trying to figure it all out. And eventually, I did figure it all out, and I realised, okay, it's time to spread the wings and, and go out in the world, James, and try and make something of your life. Yep. But if I didn't take the weed, I'd have been on the other stuff, and it'd have just got worse. I think because it was a different character on the drink and coke. The weed, I just wanted to chill with the other stoners, my big pal Franny and the boy Stuart from Finiston, that just, just puff weed, play the computer, eat pizzas. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. at the time, like you think back, and listen, I, I do I, I do miss it as well, but I was lazy anyway. So mm. when I smoked it, I was even lazier. Yeah. I'm still lazy and my life is going great. So that's why I need to stay on this path because I get more done. So if I was to drink, I'd start puffing weed, man, and everything. I'd just take two steps back, I believe, but... Like I say, I, I believe every plant has a, its purpose on this planet if you yeah. use correctly. I'm not a fucking scientist or some expert, or, but I do, I do genuinely believe everything that's grown from the earth can make positive changes in your life. So when you had the breakdown, what was that feeling like for you? That psychosis? Was it hearing voices? Was it seeing things? Was the text a hundred times worse? Oh, the texts uh, text weren't even a problem, man. Like at that point in time, the texts weren't were the least of my issues, man. I, I, I was hearing things, seeing things, but them things I felt were put there by God because, mate, I, I got real mad and, mate, <laughs> I believe Shiva was my God. Like proper, mate, you ask any of my friends, mate, I was praying to Shiva. Shiva's an Indian deity that loves the weed. Google that. That's on Google, yeah, <laughs> mate. And I believe Shiva was talking to me because, mate, my brain had been opened up on the new fucking platform, mate. On the new world, bro, my brain was on, you know? Definitely wasn't Earth, you know? Definitely was not. I was getting closer and closer to death. <laughs> and the gods were seeing me, and they were hearing me, and they were they were trying to use me. And I feel like, because I, I welcomed Shiva into my life, mate, she was, fuck off, hey, 
fucks. People are going to say I'm fucking nuts, bro, because people did say I'm nuts. But again, it happened to me, man. I'm allowed to talk about it. <laughs> There's not allowed to tell too many people in person. <laughs> they'll yeah. lock you up in a mental health institute. <laughs> Which is better for you. Like before, back 100 years ago, 200 years ago, they would have stoned me in the streets. Uh, they would have fucking hung me up and killed me, mate. But, uh, mate, it's a different world now, mate. People are able to have their freedom of speech. Where did you go? Where uh, did they take you? I went to the Ulster first. Worst mistake I ever made. Why? Uh, mate. <sighs> I went there because it was the closest hospital to me and I needed help. I'm under no illusion, mate. I was going through psychosis. I needed help, mate. I went into that hospital. They kept me waiting nine hours. I understand the NHS is busy, mate. They kept me waiting there nine fucking hours. And I, I was not suicidal, mate. I didn't hurt nobody. any. Like, I didn't want to kill myself anymore. I had... I'd made a mirror frame on, and turned it into a photo frame, mate, painted it, put lights on it, mate. I, I'd actually made something, like created something out of my mind on a bit of paper, and that woke me up out of my depression whenever I put my hands to work and set a challenge and achieved it, you know? Weird as fuck, mate, but it did. Uh, so I wasn't thinking suicidal anymore, but then after I came out of the, the depression, all suicidal thoughts went into psychosis. Went to the Ulster looking for help, they ended up pretty much sedating me and sending me home, which is fucking stupid. You know what I mean? I was obviously crazy enough to be sedated, but I'm not crazy enough to accept to get the help I was looking. So what happened was they made <sighs> fucking hell, bro. It's all a blur to be fair, mate. But I remember doctors holding me down and me telling them not to touch me because at the end of it, well. I remember them trying to take my blood to start off with because they obviously didn't believe that it was only weed that I was on. So they wanted to check to see what all else I was on because they don't trust people. So I said to them, okay, I will let you take my bloods, mate, and check me, mate. I'm not scared of needles. You know, you've seen me, ink, you know? Just fucking whip it out here now. I've got, I've got needles to my skin, mate. I've had, as I say, about this here fucking thing. I wasn't scared to get that done, mate. I laid there and got it done because that's what medical professionals are meant to do, help you. And I, I'd let them try to take my blood. Again, mate, I'd been partying. It wasn't just weed I was on. I was drinking like fuck, mate. I was dehydrated. I hadn't been eating right. Hadn't been sleeping. And they couldn't get my blood. I'm not sure why, mate. I told them it's because God didn't want them to take my blood. So then he tried again. Couldn't get my blood. And then at that point, I was starting to not trust him. So I was like, you know what it is, mate? You're not karma. Fuck you. Hey, you're not having my blood anymore. Don't do it again. My human right... If I tell you not to take my blood, mate, my human right is for you not to have my blood, you know? So from then on, they tried to persuade me to give my blood. And, mate, I I came to this point where, I like, I'd fed up with it. But then they turned around to me and said, well, you're not leaving until it's done. And I was like, mate, I came here willingly. Am I not allowed to leave willingly? You know what I mean? And they're like, no, we'll get the police on you. And I was like, for fuck's sake, what the hell? What, like, I haven't did nothing wrong to anybody and you're going to get the police on me? Well, what the fuck is going on? And like, uh, so I ended up trying to sit down and do it. And they said, if I don't calm down, which I couldn't do because I was scared. I was panicking. There was like eight doctors, nurses around me, all trying to hold me down to get my blood, which I didn't want them to have. Then they told me if I didn't calm down, they were going to sedate me. So which I point, I said, okay, okay. Let me fucking calm down. Got, they got me sat down in this real comfortable chair, mate. Tried to, tried to get me to relax, but there were still eight, nine, eight. Fuck off. Go, hey, you ball bag fucker, hey. <clears throat> a couple of ball bag fuckers around me mate pure cunts is the way I see it now uh, they're staring at me looking at me like I'm fucking crazy which I was but like I didn't do anything to hurt nobody and they were trying to grab me and throw me down on the bed to get my blood and eventually like I sat down willingly let them do it and they ended up just sedating me anyway they sedated me got me talking to a psychiatrist sent me home from there uh, my psychosis got way worse Way, way worse, mate. Fucking back home, mate, trying to sort out my house because I'd, I'd, I'd made some room in my house and I was trying to put a, a lot of my stuff in the spare room and just sort that there out to be like a therapy gaming room for myself to create videos and stuff. And, mate, I was just going nuts. My brother called him around to come help me, mate, and he was able to see how nuts it was going. Little did I know that my friend and coach 
then say Nigel will call him. <laughs> it was coming down to, to talk me into going up to his house because I had already arranged to get a boat over to England. For some fucking mad reason, mate, I was going to go see my nanny and run away from this shit. Instead of facing it like a man, mate, I was going to go. And uh, from, from Nigel coming up to me, he brought me back to his house where him and his wife were able to talk me into going to the hospital again and giving it another chance. And they were going to stick with me the full time. And I trusted them as 100%. So I let them stick with me the whole time, mate. And ended up going to the Royal Hospital in Belfast, mate. And got all the help I needed. And they sat me down, mate. And they interviewed me. And uh, uh, they got my blood, <laughs> you know. Uh, they got my blood very easily. My dad, like, they didn't need to freak me out. Didn't need to scare me. Didn't need to threaten me to get it. Because uh, I, I willingly went there and willingly wanted them to have my blood. They got it. How long did you stay there for? Maddie hours before they put me into the city hospital. From the city hospital. Uh, <laughs> hey, it was, again, full of people that are on. You're not from my jacket back on. It's been nippy in this bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from, the city, from the city hospital. I went to uh, the, the hospital in Downpatrick. From Downpatrick. Like, again, I left the city because there was nobody there I could relate to. Was that a psychiatric word? Oh, they were all psychiatric words. And what's the people like in there with you? The reason I didn't like the city is because it was all locked, lock and key to get everywhere. And made that like I didn't, a prison? Like a prison, mate. And like I didn't need to be imprisoned. I, I just needed to be around people that I could talk to and that would listen to me and would help me. And uh, again, mental health isn't very well, well spread because people with mental health problems can't be trusted. And because you can't be trusted, no nurses, doctors are going to trust you. And for you to get better in your mental health, you need trust. It's a fucked up system, mate. So how is that then at 23 and they're locking you in the psychiatric ward with other people who are really struggling and don't know what fucking day it is, some of them? Like, yeah, mate, do you, do that's you're looking I... around thinking, am I losing my shit here? Like, mate, is literally, this real life? Like, what's good, what goes through your mind? I found God whenever, like, whenever a psychosis started to hit. I was on a, I started walking home. I had like a five, six mile walk because again, someone booked me a taxi and I didn't believe them. So I walked at home from Helens Bay and I got lost in Helens Bay for a good couple of hours just trying to figure my way out and I've said to myself well I was having conversations with God in my head the entire time knocking on people's doors asking for help no one would help me because of coronavirus no one trusts anymore you know what I mean no one wants to come to their door because coronavirus is a good excuse to say no to people for it you know physical contact I'm not getting close to you not letting your charge your phone in my fucking house what type of person do you think I am <laughs> uh yeah, so I ended up walking home from there and conversations with God the entire time and I ended up getting home. Out of being lost, I found a train station, knew my way home from the train station, walked along the coast and I can remember looking up, seeing three stars in the sky, mate, grabbing, just reaching up with my hand while thinking to God, grabbing the three stars and pulling them down and said, these are mine. <laughs> you know and fuck knows what that means now bro but I'll find meaning for it eventually <laughs> were you high on medication then? no mate high on alcohol and weed you know but at the same time mate, I didn't feel too high bro I just felt normal because I was stoned out every single day for the last two years and I'd been drinking a lot the month of November so it felt normal were you suicidal? though? no I didn't want to die because I'd, I'd made something for a friend and I felt like that was more precious to me than anything because it was the first time that I'd been able to feel good. And whenever I felt good, every feeling came back because I wasn't depressed anymore. And depression's like numbness, bro. It's like proper numb. The good times feel good, but they're not really good because there's something in your head telling you that you're not meant to have them good times. Yeah. So over the yeah, last, that's... so over the last few, yeah. few weeks, then how have you really, how have you built things back? Like that's... obviously you've been getting stronger. We've been speaking quite frequently in the last few weeks, and you've been ready to tell your story. That like, how have you managed to put everything together? Have you stopped drinking? Stopped smoking weed? Uh, so I cut out, mate. I, I will smoke weed again, like I will. But uh, obviously, whenever I went in the hospital, I got handed weed from a friend before I went in, and I handed it back whenever I was in the hospital because I didn't want it. You know, I'll do. I want it badly, mate. I have if a point of proof. In, if it's putting you in psychiatric wards, then maybe it comes a time where you can't ab be able to smoke it again, bro. Like, I ain't a fucking doctor, but coming from somebody who smoked it as well, like, I was losing my shit, and it all it felt sane, but I was just so used to being thinking insane 
once you come off it, you start seeing the world clear. It takes months though, yeah. and months to cool. for it to make mm -hmm. sense because you because you're living in that bubble for so long. It's like such a weird bubble. It's like a smoky bubble. But you're mm -hmm. not really in reality because you hang about with other smokers and it feels normal. Couldn't wait to go to my friend's house, get a few joints, play the computer, phone a pizza. Same kind of routine. And I'm a father. I've got kids. I should be doing the fucking manly thing and 100. putting down the joints and and being a dad. And the worst two three months. Coming off that and the gambling was painful experience, fucking painful. And I used to, but I always try to stop smoking weed. You know yourself, yeah. you try and stop yeah, for yeah. a week, two weeks, and you feel great and fresh. You think, fuck it, I'll have a joint before you know it, you're six months deep again. And you're buying it. And you're bang on it. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's um, that you feel as if, but you're looking great, you're talking great. Does that not give you the incentive to kick on and, and nah, mate, give nah. it up? No, nah, it doesn't. Do you worry about that you can go back then? I, I, I know I'm going to go back, mate. There's no worry. No, to the psychiatric ward while you're smoking again. Mate, that, that's kind of one reason I got off because everybody was telling me if you smoke this here, there's there's a chance you could go into permanent psychosis. Mm -hmm. But I also knew that it wasn't just the weed because whenever I first started smoking, mate, I felt great. You know, I felt six foot, seven foot tall and I was able to pick it up and drop it the way I can do alcohol, the way I can do every other aspect of my life, bar fitness. Because if I do that with fitness, mate, I'm going to turn into a lazy fucker, as you just said, you know? Whereas I, I know I'm not lazy, man. I know I've got goals to achieve, man. So as long as I keep trying to achieve them goals, man, I don't see a problem with bringing a little bit of weed alongside with me. It's just as long as it doesn't grip you. As mate, long as it, it never will again, James. It never will again, mate. I will never, mate. That poem I wrote, mate, as soon as I wrote that, mate, I handed my last 50 gram of tobacco to a nurse. And I handed it to her and I said, don't give me that back, mate. That was in December while I was in the hospital. I haven't, and nor will I ever touch tobacco again. My joints will be pure. My my alcohol may not be pure, mixed with a wee bit of Red Bull, but I'm never touching tobacco again. I mean, it took both my parents. My mum died of an aneurysm attack, granted. That's not tobacco related. But, mate, I'm guaranteeing you right now the smoking didn't help that. My dad died of cancer, mate. By the time we caught it, it was riddled for his body, lad. It was killing him. Throat cancer? No, mate. Uh, I have no idea how it started, mate. That's what I'm saying. By the time we got to it, it was riddled. Mm -hmm. Free him, mate. There was no stopping it. Where do you go from here then, brother? Up. Mate, I, I, I want to fight. I'm going to fight. And it will probably kill me quicker than weed. But it's better fight than trying, mate. Mate, it's better to try. Yeah. Mate, God loves a tryer, mate. So I'm going to try on my social media now. I'm going to try to benefit me as well. I'm not, fuck off, hey, folks as well. Fuck off, you gypsy fucking assholes. Go. <laughs> hey. Fuck off, the gypsy assholes. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that out, mate, because I don't want the gypsies at my door. <laughs> you can slag every cunt else, mate, but no the gypsies. Oh, mate. <laughs> Come to my door, boys. We'll have the crack. Like. We'll have the crack. You know it's all fucking uncontrollable, yeah? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Because your YouTube's got over 300,000 uh, subscribers. Your yeah. Facebook's got over 800,000 followers. Not anymore, mate. Is it not? No. What have you got? Mate, seven, nine, something. Yes, now, fucking mate. still plenty, bro. Like. Uh, no, I know, but mate, I only get like a, this is what I'm saying, bro, I let it all die. And see, now that I'm bringing it back off, I'm able to see who was about me for what. It was actually the friend that I created something for. She said, why don't you show them the real you? And the real me is the me that these guys have always seen in the videos. But the real me is also this guy that can talk, can sit down here for a couple of hours and have a conversation. And mate, that's why I started the streaming again. The thing is, not everybody wants to watch me for that amount of time. They want to see them few ticks that make everybody laugh like fuck. They don't give a fuck about Lewis Nickel. Yeah. They only give a fuck about Tech Boy. But Cue Ball. Because mm. Cue Ball's a fucking legend, lad. You know that there? Cue Ball's just a figment of your imagination, mate. Lewis Nickel's a real guy. He has Tourette's, mate. He's got through life with his Tourette's. He, he shows you a little bit of his life. But <laughs> shit, it's not all of him. But people see you different after this interview. People see you for who you are and what you're about, what your struggles is and, and what you've had to go through. The same as myself, I thought, fuck, man, we'll, we'll probably have a laugh today, but all my, all my conversations are quite deep. Yeah, They're man. deep as fuck, man. Yeah, deep, getting deep a reason why on, yeah. I talk about my struggles as well is because people who watch my stuff maybe watch 200 interviews and they'll be thinking, fuck, he's talking about the same shit again. But I'm, it's the first time I've spoke about my struggles with you. So it's to connect with the guest, yeah. to understand that we're all struggle, we're all battle, yeah. we're all fucking going through some sort of torment and misery and hell. Like, but you can push out that hell. You can make yourself, you can make yourself better. You can make your life better. You can make adjustments, positivity to feel more enhanced, to feel more at ease. Like, 
we don't have all the answers. We'll never have all the answers. We can keep That's trying. Right. Oh, there's <laughs> Scruff up. He's had his three hour nap. Stay. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. Scruff. Go lay down. Scruff. Ah, take him I, over, bro. Take him over. I don't want him tripping over one. Yeah, it's okay, mate. Right. It's, uh, right, come on, Liberty. Come on. <laughs> but mate that's what life's about mate is connecting with people mm. and like mate you can tell your story 200 times your audience is going to listen to you say it 200 times because they've connected with you and that's what <laughs> he's on the joints bro uh, I, mate that there is the biggest connection I have you know what I mean that's why he's here with me but uh do you think that's uh, one of the main reasons why you're still here mate I'm not sure if it's one of the main reasons but I'd say it's given me more purpose than any person ever has and that's what all everybody's looking right there's a little bit of purpose yeah dogs are the best thing on this planet mate they're fucking without awesome. a doubt like. but mate that, as you said mate see that connecting with people that's the most important thing on this planet mate it doesn't matter that you've told your story 200 times you've told it to me now mate and you've understood mine and I can understand yours and understanding is what's going to push us to live a wee bit longer mate because you have someone to relate to and I now have someone to fucking relate to as well yeah. like mate you smoked 12 years mate granted I haven't smoked uh, 12 years like but I smoked a lot in the since I was 17 mate and made it put my head away same way I put your head away I mate mean, that's a connection that not a lot of people fucking have because especially here in this wee country mate the weed's been portrayed in the UK the same way fucking heroin has mate only well, difference is mate you try heroin once it'll kill you <laughs> you try weed once mate you'll hit the munchies really hard mate yeah but you try it over a period of time then it will do it, it will certainly affect you so you, you, abuse you still it, need mate. to be careful brother and I get what you're saying I'm no position to tell people to do this and do that but you will figure it out you're not daft you know what's right for you and you know what's wrong like 100 for you to want to start getting a fighting career and fight people that like, people be thinking he's not a fighter I've never seen this but you've got a potential to do anything they fucking want in life and you've already got this far by being you and pushing through the pain you here for a fucking reason like it's all about proving people wrong, but it's also about proving yourself fucking right, that you've got something special in you and everybody has. And I don't give a fuck how many times I repeat that shit. Like everybody's got greatness in them. Everyone's unique, mate. Yeah. Everybody is, mate. That's where in psychiatry, mate, the karma, fuck you got, hey, fuck you got three parts of your brain. You got that monkey side, you've got that human side, and then you've got that God creator side, mate. You know what I mean? At least that's the way I think it is. Uh, I, I did read a video that a fan had sent me, mate. I read into it a wee bit, and like that's kind of the way the psychiatrist do tell it. And, mate, I believe that if we are humble enough to God to ask him for things and for ask for forgiveness is the main thing. If you're really humble enough to turn around to God and say, you know what, I, I am not perfect, I am only human. I, I, I have a shit load to learn. And if you will teach me how to control myself and how to control my life, then I will achieve great things. You know, and it's whatever your ambitions are that you can achieve. But you have to be ambitious enough to go out there and do it. Mm. Have you ever have a, had a job? Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. What was it like working in a working environment? Stressful, mate. Is Depends that... what the job is. I, I'm starting KFC. I've got my fucking my thing tomorrow to go in and do all the paperwork. Through. No, fuck, mate. No, 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 <laughs> no. The karma, fuck, apparently, fuck off. Apparently, they want to, hey, fuck, they want to cross, burn your fucking dick off. <laughs> apparently, they want to cross train me now. Yeah. And like, <sighs> fuck me I'll do the drive through for the crack like we'll make a video out of it surely <laughs> that would go by though. but again like you say about utilising your pain as a strength as well I'm saying sometimes you know what fuck it mm. and having fun with it like, do you ever speak sometimes and you think what the fuck if I just says it and it fits a giggle yourself yeah yeah mate everybody does everybody yeah. has the oh my fucking god did I say that you know what I mean some people are able to go <laughs> I just fucking nailed the dick out of myself yeah. other people go oh for fuck's sake everybody in this room hates me now yeah. mate I do both because I'm human yeah, and I'm, I'm the same because obviously when you're talking there in depth I'm thinking fuck me like, I've got nothing but love for you but then when you hit an outburst sometimes I think fuck me that's funny as well because yeah. I'm a dark bastard as well I love some dark humour yeah. and it, because when I shouldn't laugh sometimes it makes me laugh even more yeah. I don't know how many times I get threw out of fucking class because Everyone's the same. I was laughing at things I shouldn't be laughing at people can tell me a joke and I'm think that ain't funny but I'll see some poor bastard falling down the stairs mate <laughs> and I'm oh, off for an hour <laughs> That, that's fucking it's awesome. fucking good to laugh as well it's laugh medicine. at your pain laugh at your misery because sometimes it's the fucking best medicine mm -hmm. and that can be some I, I get but yeah, it must be I different for yourself know. though because you're battling with something every single day I know I mate I'm the same as you as much as I'm different you know that's what I'm saying mate we're human we're, we're mate we're not perfect 
but we're we're all the same, but we're all unique. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I have the same sort of shit, mate. Because mate, anybody sees anybody accidentally get hit in the balls, mate, they're gonna laugh like fuck, mate. I, I got need the balls of sparring the other day, mate, and I could laugh at my own pain, you know. But at the same time, bro, I was like, as you say, I'm battling something every day, mate. No, I'm I'm used to my battle, mate. You yeah. know what I mean? To me, that's just life. Yeah. Do you think you're at a stage now where you can rebrand yourself and be that? guy who can then help people with Tourette's help 100. people with mental health still have a laugh with it but it's still pretty serious where do you know mate. what this is fucking mean I ain't gonna try and make jokes about everything 24-7 because that then consumes you and also becomes draining because that then becomes a character mate I 100% believe that I am on the right path to do the right thing to help myself first and a lot of people after because mate without me being 100% which I'm not there yet like I'm under no illusion mate that's been I've been out of hospital all month, you know? Like, I'm under no illusion, mate. I'm not 100% better. But I am on a right path to making myself the most positive, the most... the best version of myself, mate. And that's, at the end of the day, all everybody wants to achieve. And I don't give a shit what walk of life you come from. You know what I mean? There's people... I've met people, mate. I've been in McLaren's, lad. I've been in Bentley's. I've met people that have money, mate. I've, I've sat in the room... I've sat in that dinner with the Prince of Dubai, one of them, <laughs> you know what I mean? One of the Princes of Dubai, who has a fucking air, airlines companies, mate, and, like, I looked at him, mate, and although he has all that money, like, mate, he, he, he was stuck on his phone too, you know what I mean? He was he was stuck on his own head at point, points too. Like, uh, just because he has all that money, mate, didn't make him a better person than I am. Like, I was able to go into the bar and have to crack with him and relate to him in ways, you know? Granted, like, we weren't able to sit and have a drink together, but, like, <laughs> we were sitting, he was buying me drinks at the table, mate, and he was being generous enough to me because he had the money to do it, you know? But, like, at the same time, mate, I was able to make him laugh. I was able to relate to him in ways. Hey, mate, I, I said to him, uh, fuck, you are talking about all these airline companies, mate, and they, they started asking me what I, what I have, mate. I like, I have a dog called Scruff, mate. He's a really good boy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that, mate, he had the same reaction, mate. He had a laugh and had a cra- crack about it because he knew what a dog is because he's human, mate. He's able to fucking understand me a wee bit, mm-hmm. you know? And dogs have that unconditional love for everybody, bro. For anybody that's watching that's maybe going through a bit of mental health just now, what advice would you give for them? Be yourself. Be yourself, ask for help, talk to the people that you love, mate. Don't be afraid to ask for that help, mate. Uh, obviously, there's shit going on in your head. Some of it's real, some of it's not, and you can't tell the difference because reality has been figmented in your own head. Because, mate, not everybody out there hates you. There is people out there that love you, and you just need to look for them people that want to be there and support you. And if you live in the UK... If you live in Ireland, if you live in a country that's not like third world, mate, you are entitled to go out there and get that help. And it's not there to make you feel worse. It's not there so other people can make the p- take the piss out of you. Mental health institutes, mental health hospitals, they're all there to help you feel better. But you have to be the one to put in the work. A doctor can't fix your brain, mate. You're the only person living with that your whole life. You're the only person living with them negative thoughts. You need to do so. Hey, yeah, fuck off. A real man holds on to what he believes, sets goal to achieve. Wears his heart in his sleeve, sets goal to his achieve, holds on to what he believes and won't make an excuse for a sneeze. You know what I mean? Do shit to make yourself feel better and watch the rest of your life come into place. Let go of people that make you feel worse. Put yourself around people that are out there to make themselves better. You know what I mean? Hit the gym, eat right, fucking run. You know, if you can, because guess what? There's someone out there that can't fucking run, and he's probably happier than you because he's doing something else to make himself feel a wee bit fucking better. You know? Mm-hmm. So, like, get out of your own head, put yourself out there into the world, and ask for fucking help, lad. I can't express that enough. Mm-hmm. Talk to the people that you love. A lot of people are going to watch this interview and want to message you, so where can people contact you? Oh, fuck. Uh... <laughs> You can hit me up on Instagram, Lewis Cuball. Hit me up on Facebook. Fa- fuck off, hey. Bugs on the Facebook page, Lewis Cuball Nickel. Uh, yeah. Uh, YouTube YouTube, channel. YouTube channel is Lewis Cuball Nickel again, mate. It's, it's all there for you, everybody, to watch, mate. You've probably seen it and haven't clicked on it. You should have clicked. Because <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave all the links for your description. Would you like to finish up on anything, my brother? Mate, again, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, again, mate, thank you for the patience. Mm. Thank you for putting in the effort, lad.
because uh, that's all everybody needs, mate. A little bit of time and effort from somebody that they might know, they might not know. Goes a long fucking way, bro. And again, God is good because he put us in a room together. My brother, Lewis, listen, for such a young man, you've got a great mindset. It's good to see you on a good path. Everything you've done over the years, it's been phenomenal to still be here kicking on and fighting. I've got nothing but love and respect for you. You know I'm here if you ever need me. And um, just keep doing what you're doing. And I look forward to see what you do for the future, my brother. Mate, you'll be a part of it. Yeah, uh, be, mate. God bless you. God bless you too, bro. Oh, I will fuck yeah. that one up. <laughs>